All right. And the next case that had both parties present is going to be um, Anthony or well, Mark Johnson versus Anthony Johnson. And I get both parties, Anthony and Mark, to take themselves off of mute. I am here, Your Honor. All right, Anthony Johnson, can you take yourself off mute? It's a little button that looks like a microphone. Okay, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can, can you hear me. I can hear you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right, let me get you guys to raise your right hand. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, under penalty and perjury of the law? I do. Yes. All right, Mr. Anthony Johnson, I'm going to have you push yourself on mute. Mr. Johnson, uh, Mark Johnson, I'm going to have you uh, give you a little bit of your opening statement here, and then we'll go on to any of your evidence. Uh, your Honor, on I believe it was June 20th of this year, um, I was at my mother's house, which is located in DeKalb County. I was there with my son um, trying to help my older brother uh, with their some refrigerator issues that they had and an argument between my younger brother and I broke out. Uh, it got extremely heated uh, during the argument. Uh, expletives were shared and due to the, I guess, volatile nature of the argument, I thought it was best that I just get my son and leave the property because it was getting more than what I wanted my son to see and hear. Um, and as I walked past my brother to try to retrieve my son, who was in a different part of the house, he sucker punched me on the left side of my head, uh, causing a pretty severe bruise. And I've submitted the photos of the, of the bruise, excuse me. And uh, my older brother who was there basically broke it up. Uh, I grabbed my son and I left. I didn't call the police to the scene only because my nine-year-old son was with me. And I took him home and I called the police from my residence. Uh, they said I had to come down to the police station to do it. And so I did it the following afternoon, the next day and filed the police report. Okay. All right. There's some backstory, but I know you said you didn't want to hear any of that stuff, but there is backstory. But that's basically what happened on that day. Okay. All right. Give me one second. I'm just trying to find your evidence here. Give me one second. Yeah, I emailed it earlier today, somewhere between noon and like three o'clock, something like that. Okay. Clark, did you send that to me? I don't see that for him. Yes, I did. It's okay. it has exm917 I see it. I see it now okay all right is that the photograph of what you're referencing uh has it yes that is one of the two that I've sent yes okay all right and then I've got the other here hold on let me stop live share all right here's the other that is it. All right. Do you have any other witnesses or testimony beyond this? My older brother was present, but I did not request that he be a witness. I figured it'd be kind of hard for him to testify between his two brothers. I can see that. All right. Any other evidence or testimony that you intend to introduce? Uh, that's the only visible injury I had. I have a previous neck injury from years ago and the impact of him punching me and me not even being prepared for the hit. I'm dealing with other neck issues now again, and I'm not trying to say this to pile on, but uh, I have an actual medical procedure scheduled for October 4th to have my neck looked at because of the angle in which he hit me. They said it was almost like having a car accident. All right, I'm going to let, uh, if that is all of your evidence. That is it, Your Honor. I'm going to let Mr. Johnson present, present his matter in case, okay? So I'm going to ask that you, or Anthony Johnson, rather, put yourself on mute, then I'll, uh, I'll see what he has to say. 
Yes. Johnson, yes. please give your statement about what occurred and introduce any evidence you have. Uh, can, can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Okay, thank you. Um, like he says, it, it was a very heated discussion of, at the time my mother was at uh, burying her sister. It was a trying time for all of us, not just myself or him, all of us. We was having um, mechanical issues in the house, but as far as him is the punch, no, sir, that I did not do. And unfortunately we have a very bad history and honestly, and I haven't been a very good brother to him. I used to use his name back in the day, but at this point he was saying, because of, I have a bad history of criminal history and of using his name for driving privileges at the time. Um, he says, and he's a former police officer who would believe me over him? Unfortunately, I had to, um, didn't ever want to have to say it such a way, but he, he felt nobody would believe me over him. And at this point, your honor, I just got out of a 25 year marriage. I'm divorced now with it. And this is, it hasn't even been a year. He knows that of course, if I don't go to jail, financially, this would, he, it, it would just bury me because I'm already going through such adversities at this point in my life. I, like I said, I've been with my wife, 28 years married, 25 of them. And I'm within, the, within this last year that I had to come home to my mother. As he says, this happened at our mother's house and that's where I'm staying. And at this point, I wish this had never, none of this was, should be. My mother would even love to say something on my behalf. If you were even willing to hear, she's here. She's listening to all of this, Your Honor. And I love my brother, don't, with, by all. And, you know, unfortunately, this is something that shouldn't have happened. And it didn't happen, at least for me. I did not hurt him. He plays softball, Your Honor, on, uh, he's, uh, and he said to, he said to my oldest brother, I could show them this and they would believe me. Um, but at this point, Your Honor, I am sorry for all this, for, for your time, our time, for everyone's time involved in this, that I'm just trying to move on with my life. And we have childhood uh, feuds. It's this, this, Your Honor, this goes, so, this goes back to, to the 80s, to the first time I grew up past him and was able to wear his clothes. All right. So, so if you, I just want to get, you know, I, again, this is your testimony. I don't want to interfere. In yes. Sir. If you're saying that you had a witness that could testify, we'll hear that as well. Yes, I do. But I didn't know this was going to come to this to this point. I didn't know this was coming to this point I didn't until either. I received the until I received the letter. Do you do you have her there with you now? Yes, okay. Mom. If you're going to need to come on screen, I'm going to need to get her under own. Yes, this is here. She is. My um, ma'am, what's your name? My name is Carol V. Johnson. All right. When you sit down, I'm going to get you under oath, okay? You're going to have to hold. Let me sit next to you. You're going to have to hold your right hand. Okay. All right. Uh, That's perfect. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the penalty and perjury of the law? Yes. All right. Now, Mr. Johnson, just like I told the prior cat party, you can ask your mother open-ended questions, but you can't ask her a direct question. That would be for Mr. Johnson. To well, ask. There's really no questions. She just would like to speak as far as how she feels about her children at, at such adversities. 
Well, and and, I, and I'll be honest with you, I'm sure that would be a value. But what I'm primarily concerned, because I have other people's matters we want to hear, is if she has anything that can contribute to the what happened on this date regarding the allegations. Oh, unders- I understand what you mean. Then then I would have to say no, sir. I'm okay. Then I am was sorry. She, was she present when this event occurred? No, sir. No, okay. sir. All right, well, look, and I'll be honest, I really would rather not put your mother in between you guys if she at least doesn't have anything of value regarding this particular allegation. I got a mother, too, and brothers, so I totally understand. Now, if she had anything to offer regarding the incident, I'm more than happy to hear it. Yes, sir. All right. I just All right. Thank you, Mrs. John. All right, so yes, uh, sir. what I want to do then is, uh, Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. Anthony Johnson, I'm going to give you an opportunity to cross-examine Mr. Mark Johnson. And Mr. Mark Johnson, I'm going to give you an opportunity to cross-examine uh, Mr. Anthony Johnson. And then I'm going to be able to give you guys, because right now, I just want to confirm, um, I haven't been able to hear enough evidence to make a determination yet. So let's just hear some more evidence and we'll, we'll make we'll see what we can do, okay? So uh, since, you're Mr., since Mr. Mark Johnson went first, and, and I want to confirm, Mr. Anthony Johnson, you don't have any other uh, evidence do you uh no i have no evidence other than i'm just trying to move just move forward that's all okay at this point sir i got it so i'm going to give mr mark johnson an opportunity to ask you some questions and then conversing I, I, when i ask you guys to do this remember you're doing this in front of me don't do anything that is threatening don't do anything don't get all haughty and upset that's not going to be the okay. end right so just you guys have an opportunity go ahead and ask the questions to get it out all right i'm gonna go ahead if he has any questions to me i'm more than willing to listen yes all right mr johnson mr mark johnson take yourself off mute and feel free to ask those questions anthony so you're saying that you did not hit me in the face on june 20th no mark i did not hit you mark we all was out there with me you darren and william was involved Mark. So when the fight started in the den of the Mark, I'm not even sure how my, my I'm not even sure Mr. how my Johnson, nose let him, let him ask the question. Yes, sir. Sorry, Your Honor. My apology. So when we were in the den, what caused the fight to start if it wasn't you hitting me? Uh, you started uh, with the words about daddy. remember what you said about daddy to me yeah i said that you were disrespecting his legacy that's what i said no that's not what you said that's not and that is not those are not the words somewhat to it but those weren't the words you said mark but you brought but up that, brought up the fact that you well mark married this, for 20 some just, years hold on i'm asking the questions per the judge anthony johnson let's just be clear Listen, you're gonna have an opportunity to ask him questions as well. You, so don't feel the need to over talk. You get your yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's all yes, right. Sir. Continue, continue. So you you brought up the matter of you being you divorced your wife after twenty something years. How many of those years were you working during that marriage? What does that have anything to do with you? you that's not. That's that has only, that's irrelevant. I only brought, I only brought, relevant to this conflict to, to the situation. You brought up your marriage. And what you is my but yeah, you missed the mark? Like I said, I'm stay on topic, okay? Because you're right, he did bring up his marriage. And in a, maybe a normal trial that might be relevant, but to the circumstances of probable cause, unless his marriage had something to do with you getting hit in the face, let's move on. Oh, I guess what I was getting to, Your Honor, is my brother has uh, been somewhat of a drain uh, due to the way he's lived his life over the past 20 to 25 years. And that's what led to the argument that day. And I called him out on all the things that he does not do. And he didn't like it. And when I decided to leave, he punched me in the face. Well, let's continue to have you ask those questions to elicit that information from him. I mean, you've already told me that. So feel free to continue to ask him this question. 
Anthony, did you not get angry at me for all the things I was saying to you? I wasn't happy about it, but I wouldn't say angry because I don't think nothing of you, Mark. I don't. And so when Darren grabbed us during the fight. And, and you saying it, he grabbed us. No, he grabbed you. He didn't grab me. You just said he and he did because then William grabbed you. Yeah, because we were fighting because you punched me. That's why no, we were that, fighting. That was when we Darren fighting. was already Darren was already between us, Mark. Because Darren stood in my face and said, Anthony, let it go. That's what he said to me. Anthony, you, so you're saying here, he did, did he you look punch me in the face? Listen, How did listen, I, listen, listen. Did listen. Punch? Let him ask the question, Mr. Anthony Johnson. Let him ask the question. Did no, you I did not punch me in the face? How did I get the bruise on the side of my head? Mark, that's something you have to tell, be honest about. I heard it's about softball. That's what Darren said. Do you not play softball? Yeah, I do play softball, but okay. I'm not walking. And that's that why he said, and he, Darren came to me and said, Mark is going to say that's what happened. And who would believe you? Well, that is actually a lie. I don't know why you would even say that, you know, but. Yeah, I don't understand. Well, then I guess you need to bring Darren as a witness to, to that comment. If, you, if you're saying that I said that to Darren. Well, unfortunately, I didn't get to be able to submit that at the time of this hearing. All right. So, Mr. John and Mark Johnson, do you, is that all of your questions for Mr. Uh, Anthony Johnson? Those are all the questions I have, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Anthony Johnson, do you have any cross-examination questions for Mr. Mark Johnson? No, sir. You don't? All right. Do you guys have any other evidence to present to me? Not at this time, Your Honor, no. All right, Mr. Johnson, I'm going to give you an opportunity to make a closing statement regarding this particular position. Uh, and, is that me, your name? No, or, I'm referring to Mark, and then I'll allow you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know which. Okay. All right, Mr. Mark Johnson, please. Yes, sir, I'm here. Please, this is your opportunity to make a closing statement of why we should, the court should exercise or issue an arrest warrant. Your Honor, I went to that house on that day to help my older brother fix a refrigerator with my son. Uh, and I apologize if some of this sounds a little repetitive to what I said earlier. Uh, do I play softball during the week? Yes, I do. But the volatile nature of my relationship with my younger brother got to the point where he could not accept the statements that I was saying, saying to him on that day. And when I tried to leave the residence, he struck me in the left side of my face. I now have a partial herniated disc between my C4 and C5 vertebrae in my, in my neck. There's no way a softball coming at me from the side, even if I was playing softball, the ball would probably hit me in the face, not in the side of my head. Um, and a softball is not going to cause a neck injury of that severity. On August, on October 4th, I have to get a cervical spine injection in my neck due to the injury that was caused by Anthony striking me with me being, I had no ability, no time to flinch, no time to react, no time to uh, even try to defend myself. It was a total sucker punch. Uh, I, I, I never saw it coming. And because I was in this limp state, not expecting to be hit, it caused an injury to my face and to my neck. And for him to stand there and say that I am making this all up, despite what my years of service as a law enforcement, that has nothing to do with this in any way, shape or form. Nothing to do with this. And I have never uttered anything to my older brother about Who's going to believe him over me? That is all a fabricated lie on his part to try to avoid incarceration. 
My brother has impersonated me over 10 times on multiple traffic violations. And that is part of the history, the horrible history between him and I. And when I threw all that in his face, he couldn't take it and he punched me. Okay. All right. Mr. Anthony Johnson. Yes, sir. Do you have any closing remarks about you and these allegations of you punching him in the face? Well, first of all, I am sorry to, to say, yes, I did impersonate him back over, it's been at least over 15 years ago. And then several times he's he's correct with that. And I've been very apologetic towards it. He doesn't feel I was very remorseful, but I'm sorry that he feels that way because I am truly sorry that I've ever done that to him. But Yana, again, he's very upset because of those things I've done to him. And they've been quite some time ago, sir. Over over decades over decades and I'm sorry Ma and I still love you and I hope maybe one day we can get through this we've been through a lot since we've lost daddy but right now it's all he your honor he says he was here to help his older brother but he failed to say I live here too so it wasn't helping just him it was helping the house, the house, the refrigerator went down at that point, and it was just a bad time. It was a bad time. Your Honor, I have proof that the in, the latest incident with Anthony and my license happened less than ten years ago. That's not relevant, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but that's not relevant. Um, that's not the basis of what's going on. And if that was the case, that'd be fraud. That'd be a felony, wouldn't it? Yes, so, sir. Um, Right. So, you mean, that'd be a whole different issue, right? That'd be, that'd be a yes, sir. I yes, have sir. the timestamp of the photographs when they were taken. That, that, again, Mr. Mark, Mark, Mark Johnson, that's not relevant. I'm not telling you, look, if you wanted him arrested on that, you could have had him arrested on that, right? Because he's essentially I in he was And I was. Right. But, but that's not what we're here on. And it sounds like that may have already been addressed. What we're here on is whether or not he punched you in the face. Now, let me tell you. My job is not only to consider the evidence, my job is also to consider the veracity of people's statements to determine whether or not somebody's telling the truth. Right. That's my job. Right. Particularly when we have essentially a he said, she said, and we have family members that are effectively that are on the outside. I can see why nobody would want to make a statement on either side, uh, because you guys are all family. And so that's what makes it even more difficult for myself, because in the end, I understand how that goes. I understand this may not be the last time that you guys interact. I understand even if I was to issue an arrest warrant, issue special conditions, that is in and of itself going to end the relationship between you people. And that is the in the event, the, what is even more complicated about your case, because you guys are essentially uh, have allegations of violence and other criminal acts potentially that have been committed. Um, let me ask you this, Mr. Johnson. Did you inquire about having your other brother come and testify for you? When I initially spoke with him, he said he would. Mm -hmm. But he seemed reluctant. And I, like you said, I, you know, he was right there. He saw the whole thing. And so this is what I'm going to do. This is probable cause. This is a low threshold. Right. So whatever I do doesn't in and of itself make anybody guilty or not guilty. Your Honor, the bruise on my face says it all. Well, this is what I'm going to do. It's probable cause. And because it's probable cause, even though both of you guys made Mr. John Anthony Johnson, I'm going to be honest. Yes, He's made the allegation, even though he bears the burden, uh, based upon the information that I have, you're making an allegation that it's coming from somewhere else that then would switch the burden. You haven't produced anything to say otherwise. Uh, you had your mother here. She could have potentially testified of whether or not that was true. She didn't say anything regarding that. You said she had no knowledge of these particular incidents. Uh, and so uh, with that. She, felt she was, she's in the room was asking I, and to I'm say not that. Gonna ask, like and I'm not something. going to ask your mother. That's the only reason why, sir. But not gonna do it. I'm not going to ask yeah. you for the testing if I for or against yes, you. 
Stop. Yes, sir. This is what I'm going to do. I am going to issue an arrest warrant. Obviously, it's going to be uh, a uh, uh, essentially a non-monetary bond here. Um, and so you're not going to have to put up bond. Now, this is my bigger thing. Listen, fellas, I, you know, I don't know your age difference, and I know you seem to be living with your mother, sir, uh, and I know you're going to interact with each other. That's just a fact, right? You know, even after you turn yourself in, you're going to go back home. Mr. Mark Johnson, you're going to want to go see your mama anytime, right? And so uh, if I put a stay away order, Mr. Johnson, that's going to be severely uh, probably going to make it difficult for not only both you and Mr. Johnson to talk and interact with your mother. And particularly if you live with yes, your sir. mother, he wants to go see his mother. And if I issue a stay away, that means you can't be around him. So he come see your mama and make you not have to leave, right? And so um, I don't want to do that to you. I can't control what you guys do today outside of me. I hope you don't, sir. Right? But I just want to make sure, again, this isn't a full adjudication on the issue, but I just want to stress to you guys, man, uh, <laughs> Nobody wins when the family feuds. If y'all already lost one parent, you know, this stress of this can kill another one. And so I want to remind you guys, particularly because I do find there's enough probable cause, but the importance uh, of this matter. So I'm going to issue the arrest warrant. As I said before, I'm going to have my clerk get your email. You're going to put it in the chat box. She's going to introduce instructions. Just like before with the other defendant, uh, Mr. Johnson, I'm going to give you until October 5th to turn yourself in. You can turn yourself in any day after uh, September uh, 28th, because that is when Mr. Mark Johnson is going to have to go and sign sign this particular warrant. I am not going to issue a stay away. What I am going to issue is a no violent contact. Now, what that means is, is that Mr. Johnson, both Mr. Johnsons can interact and be around each other. But obviously, if there are issues of violence, uh, then there could potentially be a situation where my special condition has been violated and potentially other charges, depending upon what occurs, can be also be uh, found, and they may even be aggravated stalking, depending depending upon what actually occurs uh, from that incident. So I just want to make sure you're aware of that, but I am not issuing a stay away, but no violent contact. Um, and so again, you'll have the 28th, Mr. Johnson, to come down the municipal court down there off of the uh, off of Memorial Drive in 285, you'll have till at the end of day on the 28th to sign that. That's Wednesday. And then, Mr. Johnson, you'll have any day from the 29th all the way to October 5th to turn yourself in. Uh, you would again go first to the municipal court. And again, my clerk is going to email you instructions. And then you will go over to uh, the uh, jail to get processed. Okay. Uh, you wanna, and one quick thing I have a flight. I'll be flying out of town on first thing. Wednesday morning on business. So you can do it tomorrow then. You you can do it any day between tomorrow and Wednesday. That means you just okay. need to get it done tomorrow. That's, that's fine. Okay. Uh, and so again, but again, Ms., uh, Mr. Uh, Anthony Johnson, you're still going to have until the 5th to go ahead and turn yourself in. You can turn yourself in any of one of those days. If you fail to turn yourself in by the 5th, uh, then you will be. I understand completely, Your Honor. I got it. I got it. I got it. I figured again. Listen, fellas, brothers, in, in, in all uh, seriousness, you guys know how this goes. Uh, you guys are going to be family for a long time. I hope this gets resolved. I hope you guys don't have to come and see me again. And uh, you guys will follow the instructions. Please put your email down in the chat box uh, so that my clerk can email you the appropriate instructions. Uh, and that will become the order of the court. All right. Understood. Please put your chat, put your email in the chat box so we can get you the instructions. If you guys don't, I'm going to be honestly, I'm not is sure that, if I'm going to do it, this correctly because this, okay. this is actually my first time ever doing this. It's fine. It's fine. I don't want okay. anybody to be confused, right? <laughs> but that's why I want you to uh, put in the chat. So there's a little button. Yeah. That's we gonna, don't know how to do it. We talked earlier. Right. Oh, yeah. I already know the basics that I okay. have until October. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Anthony Johnson, if you can, if yes, you don't mind just telling me right now what your email address is, I'll just go ahead and write it down. That'll be. All right, I'm just going to repeat that back just to make sure I have it correctly. That's. At gmail.com. That's correct. 
All right, I'll send you an email. And Mr. Mark Johnson, I believe I have the email from your evidence earlier. Is that the one which you would like me to send your email to? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, fellas. You guys have a great evening, okay? Thank to you, Your Honor, thank you. Thank you.